yeah, we're going to talk about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Uh, but before we get started, I just want to remind everybody that Godzilla's Monsterpiece Theater, number one, is coming out in October. And next Monday is the final order cutoff. So that's the date where comic stores have to put in, you know, their orders. If you want to get Godzilla's Monsterpiece Theater, let your local comics retailer know so they'll know to, like, add an extra copy <laughs> for you. Definitely. I can't wait. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the, the new Tim Burton movie. It's always an event when there's a new Tim Burton movie, especially if it's like in his wheelhouse and especially if it's a follow up, you know, a sequel. And Pittsburgh's own Michael Keaton. Mm -hmm. Michael Keaton Douglas. Michael Keaton Douglas? Yeah, he's, cha <laughs> he's changing his name back. He, are you serious? Wow, yeah, that's I that's the, that? Whoa. that's that's big that's big Pittsburgh that's huge. news. Huge! Yes. Holy shit! He you just said, broke this. Breaking news! You heard it here first, folks. Because uh, he, he said that um, you know he just want you know it's kind of weird going by a name that's not your name that you only had to take because uh, you know there was already a Michael Douglas. So he said he said he wants to go back to being Michael Douglas, but to to kind of keep people from being too confused, he's he's going to go by Michael Keaton Douglas. That's kind of awesome. He's gonna be one of those three name three guys. Name guys. He's gonna be like Kagan, Michael, Michael <laughs> Key. Or something. He's uh, on the reboot of Home Improvement. He's the fourth child. Of, <laughs> it's like yeah, he's like Tara Noah Smith, Zachary mm -hmm. Ty Bryan, mm -hmm. Michael Keaton, and Michael Keaton Douglas. Mm -hmm. He's the fourth. Yeah, Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yeah, yeah David Mike, Lee Roth. <laughs> David D, like uh, Michael J. Fox is actually Michael A. Fox, and he thought people would bust his butt balls for that mm -hmm. so he's like <laughs> changed to jay yeah that was a good good move we saw beetlejuice beetlejuice on the premiere yeah like, it, it was, was like opening that yeah show one night one yeah i that it just kind of worked it just kind of worked out that way it just kind of happened to be like a good time for us to to you know all, all fit both our schedules but yeah it was it was nice being there with you know pretty uh popping crowd you know yeah and i was trying to think about when uh what Tim Burton had done recently. Okay, what? Any any uh, uh, answers? I, 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 all I could like think about. I, I, I didn't pull the um his filmography. Like, I'm just thinking about stuff that's. I'm like, maybe he did this, that, the other. I look and it's like those are all like 20 years old. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. His, no, yeah. Because when I think of like, oh, what's a recent <laughs> Tim Burton movie? It's like uh, Big Fish, yeah, Dark Shadows, <laughs> and yeah, you're right. That's like 20, 20 years. Ago. 20 years ago. This one was so good. It's like he still has. His, like, fastball. Yeah, I mean, I hate to be, like, one of those people. Who, but it's like, man, we loved Beetlejuice. So, Tim Burton, make another Beetlejuice. So so then he does. And it's like, yes, yes. thank you. And it's like, make another Batman. Make another <laughs> make another Pee Wee movie. Like, yes. I mean, it's, you know, it's a little late. Now, maybe we could do, like, a stop motion oh, Pee Wee my, movie or something. Oh, my God, that would be amazing. Take, take one of those, like scripts that Pee Wee wrote that never got produced and like you know animated we had we're we're, we're talking about uh the original Beetlejuice sequel that never got made Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian yeah <laughs> so that script is out there from the nine early 90s of course it, it, yeah there's also like the Beetlejuice cartoon and and the the cartoon it's like that's one thing like same thing with Ghostbusters it's kind of like you see you watch Ghostbusters you watch Ghostbusters too and then it's kind of like okay yeah great great movie you know all that stuff but like, why is it so beloved? But, like, you kind of forget that, like, generations of kids, you know, us included, were kind of, like, you know, ha got to spend a little more time than maybe, like, our parents did. with Because we had, like, the Ghostbusters cartoon and we had the Beetlejuice cartoon. And the Beetlejuice cartoon, you do, like... And the toys. The toys. Yeah, you get to kind of, like, fill out that experience a little. And, and I feel like the Ghostbusters sequels, like the new Ghostbusters kind of tap into the cartoons yeah. a little more than, than than you might notice on the surface. And I feel like Beetlejuice did a little bit because Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, because like in the original Beetlejuice, Lydia Dietz wanted like nothing to do with Beetlejuice. He was just scary and gross to her. She wanted nothing to do with him. But then in the cartoon, they were like best friends. I know. They like they like you know traveled everywhere to get like they they teamed them up. And I think I think kids kind of enjoyed that dynamic of like Beetlejuice being like your best, your your wacky best friend instead of being this like terrifying, you know, this this uh, gross monster. And so then in this, it's like, it still continues from the first one. She's still freaked out and scared of Beetlejuice, 
but there are, are like kind of moments where they start to team up, team and, up. and you kind of feel Dude. a little bit of that like cartoon. Yeah, because like that's Beetlejuice. You you, you went on so many like yeah, your animated friend. adventures. Yeah, you went on, buddy. Like, yeah, like they had, didn't they have like some kind of vehicle they yeah, went in, or, like, or it was like a... <laughs> Beetlejuice in the first one was like the shark and Jaws. Like he was just in it, just enough. Yeah, the Tim Burton. That seems to be a thing with Tim Burton, and he just knows. It. And he probably it's probably from his fandom of like the monster movies too because like the old like universal monster movies and stuff they like the better ones knew to like kind of hold the monster in reserve but like he does that in batman he holds batman in reserve in beetlejuice he holds beetlejuice in reserve um uh, like uh and, and then beetlejuice beetlejuice the same like like it was so much fun seeing beetlejuice michael keaton was so great so great to see him again hasn't missed a beat looks perfect I imagine, you know, the older you get, the less makeup you have to apply to make somebody look like a corpse. Uh, he actually didn't have any makeup yeah, applied. Like, He's yeah. like, <laughs> um, you look great, Michael. But yeah, like just, just so much fun, so great. And yeah, like he knows to kind of, because Tim Burton has the best trailers. Like the trailer to Batman and Batman Returns. Oh they were like amazing trailers. Uh, trailer to Beetlejuice was great. And then the trailer to Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I want to watch it again. Cause like the trailer is amazing and when i was a kid uh you know watching beetlejuice and watching batman it was the same experience where the trailer would lead you believe to believe that this guy is all over the thing like yes. you're just gonna be watching uh non Be yeah beetlejuice with like that crazy <laughs> thing on his head with like, like all the stuff spinning around like it's just gonna be it's gonna be like he's gonna be like john belushi in animal house or something and then you know watching the movie for the first time it's like okay who are these two like yeah. you, where's beetlejuice <laughs> What's he, you know? Yeah, like, I, when I first watched it, too, I, I got, like, when I'm little, I'm like, I'm like, get these people off the screen. Yeah, I don't I don't care about these, these this, uh, uh, this uh, geriatric couple. You know, they're supposed to be this, like, young, like, cute couple. I guess they're supposed to be, like, they're, like, in their 30s, approaching their 40s or, or something. And I, I think for Halloween, I might uh, try to uh, cop this look here. Alec Baldwin's, well, like... you know what you should do? You should do, like, one of those costumes... Where it's like you and a mannequin, so like you're you're Alec Baldwin, but then you also have like a Gina Davis kind of like mannequin that you're sort of like attached to. The uh, or he, he does. The, Maybe they uh, could have their arms around each other, so it could be like your one arm could be Alec Baldwin's arm, your other arm could be Gina Davis's arm, and then you have like a little Gina Davis head. I, I would like the, the toy where my head slides down, so yeah. like where he's holding his head in his arm. Mm -hmm. But I was um freaked me out car and water deaths like when when they fall when their car crashed in the water when i'm little i'm always like you've got time to get out of the car i'm like mm -hmm. just climb out but it's like same with like yeah open the door swim out you know it's <laughs> swim out swim out through that like clear tank that yeah. they have in hollywood <laughs> where they film all the underwater scenes where, but it's it's like yeah well you know in real life you open the door Water just pours in, and it's dark, and, like, the door shuts again. Disoriented. Yeah, you're, yeah, you don't know which way's up. And Beetlejuice had his uh, maroon, like, suit on. And mm -hmm. this one, and, and Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah, again. it was like, you got the hits. Like, he sort of came up, there was, like, enough of a new plot with, like, little twists and turns and stuff. But, like, you're, you're you know, you're there to to, to hear Freebird. Or whatever. Oh, you yeah, know play I mean? the like, hits. Yeah. And, and the guys that wrote it worked on Spider-Man 2, Sam Raimi's okay. Spider-Man 2, so... Got, yeah, I like the way it was written. They they played a little fast and loose with the rules that were set up in in the original Beatles. Like like there were certain rules that they did not adhere to uh, about like how the afterlife functions and stuff that they didn't adhere to. But I like I'm okay with that. It's been a bunch of decades. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of times, like this is kind of something just in the course of writing. Sometimes in your early drafts of of, of a story, you have all these like different rules and things. And, and it's, it, you know, it kind of like makes sense and, and is helpful for you. But when you get into the later drafts and really get like in the groove, it's like you don't need those rules. It's about like people care about characters. They care about like they want to spend time with interesting characters and stuff like like they don't, you know, like like we're not so much like, hey, you, you know, there is a segment of the audience that is like keeping track. But, you have your notepad. Yeah. So like when those moments happen, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. Like like we're we're good. You know, we're we're past that. No. But watching the original Beetlejuice, they they cut to this guy here, uh and uh Robert Goulet or whatever, and like that is 
that is like a um, Batman background. Oh, that's like uh, that's perfect. That's Gotham City yeah, right there. That's Jack Palance's uh, hideout. He's like uh, Jack Napier comes in and blows away Goulet. Yeah. <laughs> like... like the first Beetlejuice is so lean and mean. Like this. This one had had a little the Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice had a little flab Fab. to it, but I didn't mind because I just want more of it. Like, Me like, too. Like we already got Beetlejuice. We already got this like optimized, like perfect experience. But now it's like decades later. I just want to like luxury. I Wasn't it cool having like take place on Halloween night? Mm -hmm. This would be a great like for years to come. Like a like a throw it on. It was it was great seeing Winona Ryder in it because you always. Like we're all pulling for her, you know. Oh. Like and 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 post Stranger Things feels like she's got this like, you know, third act or whatever. This like a lot of momentum. Maybe there was a point, maybe a couple decades ago, where if they were gonna make like a sequel to this, it wouldn't have included uh, her. But but you know now it's like okay, well you can't you can't do it without. It really made me happy. Catherine like Catherine O'Hara was in the trailer, and so I was like, okay, cool, she's gonna be in the movie, but. She had a huge, huge presence role. in this, which was great. She was amazing. Okay. She was so good. Like, uh, could I mean, be the best performance in the movie. Yeah, I think it. She, like, like her, like she, uh, she's she's only gotten better. You know, so awesome. It, it is funny though, like these things, because like she she is Lydia's nemesis in the first Beetlejuice. Like they could not hate each other more. <laughs> and then even by the end of it, it's not like by the end of it. They like have a big hug. They hug it out, or <laughs> like by the end of it, it's not you know like she's got this like now she's got this like second set of ghost parents that are like more to her liking than her actual parents. But like, but then in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, but just by necessity and the passage of time, it's like those two are like old friends. They're like yeah. they're tight. You know, there's like some reference to oh things were kind of you know hairy there for a little while, but they're you know, and in 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 the, uh, the they had like the model of the of the town and uh uh baldwin and davis i saw their little characters like in the model as the oh, camera okay. passed by in their car oh, in yeah. the river mm -hmm. too i was like all right yeah like i'm thinking about tim burton's career because like okay he does like his first feature is peewee's big adventure yeah and man like there's there's no more perfect movie than that and then his next feature is beetlejuice yeah and what, like what a homer like me? so it's like this guy is like <laughs> dynamite this guy's like two perfect movies and then the next one after that is batman, batman. <laughs> now it's kind of like he makes a perfect movie he makes another perfect movie and then he makes a movie that like is like you know great in its own way has virtues but isn't exactly what people were looking for you know what yeah. i mean like it kind of like I mean, again amazing trailer it was almost kind of like like batman like like batman's the weak one of those first three you <laughs> yeah, know you like, think about that and you think about it like it's like okay batman had all the ingredients and it's like you just didn't like it could have been so great you know the trailer the little uh sizzle reel or whatever like oh it, everything God. looked so, like this was gonna be like the greatest thing for, and and it just didn't didn't quite like hit the home run like it was you know like like i'm just talking in, uh, uh as as a movie experience yeah like, i think like I like I love it. All these years later, looking back, I love it. But I, again, as a kid seeing it, it was like oh, that wasn't quite what I want. And I feel like you know. But then and then he does he does Batman Returns, and again, love it. We it's love great. that. But it was the same kind of thing. Where it's like oh, you didn't quite give it. Like the 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 first time somebody gave me what I wanted from like a superhero movie like that was the Tobey Maguire Spider Man. That's where oh. it's like okay, you gave me everything I'm looking for from a superhero movie. Thank Nailed you. In. Cool. You know, I'm going home. You know. But well, but but you look at that career, like like incredible. yeah, incredible career. Um, you know, and if if your weak movie is uh, the Michael <laughs> Keaton Batman that like made a zillion dollars, like you're doing pretty good. And then uh, was Edward Scissorhands next after that? Oh yeah, Edward Scissorhands is in there. So, mm -hmm. Or um, trying to like I didn't see Beetle the original Beetlejuice in the theater, but I saw Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Saw in the theater. Didn't see Beetlejuice. Saw Batman. Saw Edward Scissorhands in the theater. And Edward Scissorhands, it was the same thing too. Like you see the like, like Tim Burton really does have like the best trailers on earth. And like you watch that Edward Scissorhands trailer and you want it to be something, and then you see it and it's like, okay, yeah, this is good, but this isn't what I wanted. But what I thought it was gonna. I be. never was a 
mega fan of Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. Like, I really, I wanted to love it. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I get what he's going for. I like having Vincent Price in uh, it. And, was an animator for Disney or something. Yeah, yeah. And um, he worked on the Dark Crystal, not the Dark Crystal, the Black, Black Cauldron. Cauldron. Yeah. Oh. And that was, like, Black Cauldron was one of the ones where it's like, okay, we got this new crop of, like, young animators, and we're going to give them, you know, hand this over to them. And you look at the designs that he made for the Black Cauldron, and it looks like none of it made it into the movie. <laughs> I, I, and again, because he had his own style. Like, he would draw in that sort of, like, scary Dr. Seuss style that, that ended up, I mean, becoming you know, the look of, of The Nightmare Before Christmas yeah. is is that. And it also became, like, that was its own subgenre. Like, when, like, goth was at its height, was, like, this subgenre of, like, scary Dr. Seuss drawings. Like, it, it's all coming, it's all directly, direct the, the direct descendants of Tim Burton, but he, <laughs> definitely, he invented, like, a type of art. Tim Burton seems like a cool dude, like, when you hear him talk and stuff. And, like... I, when I was younger, I hadn't heard him really speak or like yeah. talk on camera. Well, you and just I thought the, I was yeah. scared of him. Right, yeah. I was like, the oh, master this, of the macabre. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> yeah, you like, because you'd see like, I, I guess it's going to be mean. Like Batman, like I looked at so many like, you know, magazines and stills of the first Batman movie before I saw it. Like, like it could not possibly live up to the hype because I was so like thoroughly... Like, like that, that it's almost like that was, that was the movie that taught me to like stay away from trailers and stay away from like too much information and spoilers and stuff. Cause it was like, I just soaked all that stuff in and then could only be disappointed when I saw it. Before I saw it, I had like read the comics adaptation. It's an excellent comics adaptation. I, I, you know, saw these magazines and stuff. And then like, I didn't see it opening night. Like I didn't have like, like my parents didn't want to go see it or anything like that. Like I didn't have somebody to go see it with like the opening week. So I feel like it was like a couple weeks before I actually saw it, but everybody else had seen it. So like at school and stuff, I'd have to be like, oh yeah, I saw it. And then I'd be like, oh yeah, I really like that scene where he says this and they're like, there's no scene like that. And it was like a cut scene. It was a scene that was in the comic, but not in the, I read the novelization. Oh yeah. Love, and love the novelization has the scene that, that was cut out and then saved for Batman Returns where like they get cornered in an alley and then the, this little thing drops up and lifts up the Batmobile, and then the Batmobile does a 180. That's in the novelization. Oh, dude, I, I was thinking about some novelizations. I'm picking up the Back to the Future novelization. Oh, yeah. Be read because that. I think it, it, it has the Stoltz version is the novelization. Oh, they novelized the Stoltz, yeah. I think he's described as Eric, like his, mm -hmm. the, I was looking up Eric Stoltz's, like, stills, and I'm picking up his, like, Basically, I'm going to do like a cosplay of Eric Stoltz from Back mm -hmm. to the Future. But the novelization is this is like has Stoltz moments in it. That's interesting, man. I, yeah, I, yeah, that, that 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 could be an episode. You know? It's a hit. It's yeah. made a lot of money. That's awesome. I mean, I feel like that's like the only way they're having hits now is, uh, you know, well, doing. And do you think this is going to nudge uh, Tim Burton to do like another Batman? Movie? Like, do you think another Batman movie is going to happen? Or do you think it's like you know, this success will mean that some, some other sort of pet project he has that's like... You know, I hope he does another Batman. That That's whatever, like, we would crave. Like, somebody asked them if they were gonna... Or, or we get the Tim Burton Superman. Oh, okay. <laughs> now we're cooking that. The one that's, that's, like, famous from the Total Recall show. To if... Oh my God! What if what if he does get around to directing Nick Cage as Superman? Yeah, Wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, like, it's kind of a shit. It feels like we're sort of past the superhero movie moment. Like maybe there was a time when it, it was almost like he almost had to make another superhero, like a Marvel movie or something, but then like dodged that, that bullet or whatever. But like, I feel like now that moment's past. like if he were to do a superhero movie, it would be because he was like, you know, really passionate to do it. But I imagine that's like, that's like not anything he'd be interested in, in do it, interested in doing. I, yeah, like, like any of these creepy superheroes, I'm sure They've all like a print, like uh, when Sam Raimi did the uh, uh, Doctor Strange and stuff. Like, I feel like Sam Raimi is like the guy you get when Tim Burton is not available. <laughs> like, maybe that flip flop that a certain, maybe when at the height of like Spider Man mania, it had flip flop. But because I remember there was like a, um, there was like a Wizard of Oz prequel, and like you could tell they wanted 
uh, Tim, Tim Burton, Burton, but they got uh, they 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 got Sam Raimi. It is cool. Like basically, we got a uh, Bat uh, Batman Returns Redux with uh, we got uh, Michael Keaton and Danny DeVito. Isn't mm -hmm. that like awesome seeing them together? Yeah, they they yeah Danny DeVito. There was not enough Danny. I mean, Danny DeVito was very good in it. There was not enough of him. No. Obviously, like you want him to like team up with Beetlejuice. Yes, you know? I thought he was gonna be like the villain in it or something. <clears throat> keep the, keep these like. You know, they have Beetlejuice. They have Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. They gotta have Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice lined up. Oh, uh, please. Road movie. <laughs> Beetlejuice yes! loads up the truck, you know, <laughs> drive somewhere. We were joking around that uh, Burton, you know, he was working with DeVito again for this. And he's like, yeah, you're with Keaton, but you're once again going to have, like, uncontrollable slop coming out of your mouth. <laughs> right. Like... Danny DeVito can't be in a Tim Burton movie without, uh, you know, being there Spittle. with with, uh, with Spittle and Michael Keaton. <laughs> So yeah, uh, we'll see you next time. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs>